drilled up. On my way out, I saw Parsley, uh, one of uh, Chris's drivers, Chris and Harry's drivers, just pulling in. So yeah, Hi, Paul's got uh, us drilled up. So yeah, jobs are good and like. Yeah, it says I had a quick word with him on the way out. He's still got a lot to do, you know, with it being late season, but ah, there's plenty of time, plenty of moisture under there, so it's, and it's warmish soil, so as soon as it hits ground, it'll be away like. So, that has made a good job. We had a leak, so before we do out, we had to mend our leak, and it was that bloody union there what had split. Um, but what, what a job we had to take that pipe off, them, them Jubilee clips, these pipes, this pipe, all that bloody tap assembly to get at it to, uh, so we could work. And uh, we've had it back together twice and, uh, and we've had leaks, for, well, three times, three or four times. So, but we've had a, an O-ring just out of place on this, I think, fingers crossed. All been well, we, we've cracked it this time. Don't say that because you might crack that if you... Yeah, pull it all the way. Don't give it how much. If it leaks, we'll try it. You know what I mean? Whoa! <coughs> you won't get this with a new Bateman on? Yeah, it'll be out. Yeah, but it keeps you uh, the skill of spannering. There's all this hard material. <laughs> A slight drip there, but I don't know. I think we're all right. Yes, took a bit of doing that. I mean, it's all good to do, and it's been uh, a bit of a sod, really. So, one of them quarter of an hour jobs has gone on to a bloody about an hour and a half. So, it's just under 213 mils to take up Oliver, and uh, that's it, job done. Go get filled up. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a new Bateman. In fact, it's, I don't know, it's on the cards in next year or two. I don't know whether it'd be a Bateman. I quite like the look of the Sams. There's a few lads around here with Sams. And they look real nice sprayers. We need something quite fast on the road, though. I don't know what the year Bateman is and these Sams are like, but this does 50k, well, it does 50k easy. He's at 60k out of it. Scary. I can't do 60k. I can do f fastest I've been on big narrows. He's 58, he's had 60 out of it down Main Road. And I don't know, his balls must be bigger than mine. Because she was all over the spot. Don't do it loaded. Yeah, he said he won't. Well, you won't do it loaded, it'll pull you off road. Empty, empty. Yeah. In fact, I think it was more impressive than the guy Martin doing 100 and. Uh, In fast track. And that fast track, all balanced up, and you know. Like this was all over the spot, it was rolling like that, you know, so yeah. You had to have balls of steel to get her to 60. So yeah, we need something with a bit of road, a good fast road speed. Our donor uh, gem sprayer came into uh, good use again. We've got some O-rings and a union off it, so a little elbow. So yeah, I bought that York sale, 10 pound. And uh, it was Richard Furby's, he put it in. And uh, he says, bloody hell, yeah, I mean, that cheap. He says, uh, so he nicked lids off it. And uh, he nicked lids and uh, Larry's have it for 10 pound. So yeah, well, you went to get that bugger. What would it be? Like all his damage, that is scrap now, but it's plaggy, so it'll go in bin. But you went to get that bloody filter I was in. Well, I'm trying to think nowadays. Anyway, right. Phil picked this up this morning, it's a Massey Fergie 500 drill. Grain only though, probably was original, uh, originally. Oh no, it won't. It's grain only. Um, it doesn't have the dual spouts for grain and fur, but 
it's probably the tidiest one I've seen in a long while. There won't be many left as tidy as this. You know, it's at a real good hole. It's got this fancy following arrow. I don't think that was original. And it's hydraulic up and down. Twelve hundred quid with trailer. It's a bargain for you, massive Fergie perverts out there to just play with or go drill corn properly because it will. It'll uh, it'll put seed in the ground as good as any other drill. Maybe not an avatar. Like. It's always a bad sign when you come back into the yard and there's glass on the floor. Anyway, our Oliver's uh, <laughs> lost door glass out of my sprayer, so the trouble is I'm struggling to find one. Well, Frank's on the case, he reckons he can get one for tomorrow morning. But I'm loaded up with chemicals, so I'm going to have to go spray it out. So what I've got, I've got myself a dust mask and uh, hopefully, there isn't a lot of wind. So I'll be all right, but Christ, it's a big no-no, isn't it? Going spray with no bloody glass. You won't want to go spray nowadays with, uh, without any, without a back window in your tractor, out, would you? But anyway, needs must. So right, look at the bloody. We've look. It's just never-ending. T two time, and it's come really fast. It doesn't seem two minutes. I think it's only about eight days since we were through with T ones, and the growth stages have have just flown through. So. Um, yeah, we don't leave it like this all the time. We have a clear up line. We put, we get these tatty bags for our empties before they go to the recycling place, and uh, it's just a bit easier to handle. Uh, boxes, uh, boxes actually, we take all plastic off them, like plastic top off, uh, top and bottom, and sling them in pegs. And uh, when the when they're being boisterous with each other, it just gives them, it occupies them for a bit, um, keeps them happy. Yeah, 
all depends on back end and how damp it is at harvest, whether we can get this pulled up and get it sort of a full seabed to try and uh, get a lot to, to uh, sort of chitter back end so we can get them cleaned up before we put our next cash drop in. But I'll think very, very carefully about our uh, our rotation. But I mean, this wheat has potential to uh, doing like four ton, three and a half, well, three and a half ton. And uh, there's spring barley up here. If you get two and a half, you've done uh, done well. So you know, I don't know. It's just not easy. It's not easy at all. Just a bit of a of proof of how good, well, how effective the herbicide is on our terrible black grass uh, problem land. I mean, there's black grass galore everywhere in this field, but we're growing crops among it. And uh, to be fair, this will have to come spring corn, I think, uh, to try and battle it, because we're getting more and more. Anyway, look, this is uh, our Ollie. That's his uh, headland mark up the dike side and then when he's been setting his AB on his GPS I don't know what he's done but he's got too wide so he's left uh, so the so the wheelings are like four or five foot wider than they should be so this hasn't had no residual chemical and look it's just a mass of wild oats and black grass I mean there's wheat in among it but there's no crop whatsoever I mean that looks pretty promising this wheat next door but yeah anything missed ends up like that so you know what a bloody mess so what I'm gonna do now we've got this little sprayer I'm back at Polaris buggy it's real narrow at this end so what I'll do I'll go down with I brought knapsack as well so I'll knapsack that bit off and then we've got this little sprayer what I move that boom back and just strip it off an edge and it um, it'll just sort of do a strip um, to to eliminate it because it's bad enough these little buggers seeding you know ones we've got in our crop but if we let that seed Christ there'll be a massive bank of seed for the uh, rest of my lifetime so bits like that we spray off but yeah there's more and more you can see like the as time goes by more's appearing in the standing crop god it's hard work isn't it you know, you lads with all clean land, lads and lasses with clean land, bloody hell, you must be so lucky. <laughs> 